Welcome to LARP Academia, and we are going to talk about what you get as a level 3 wizard. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you can stay up to date. Now, continuing our tirade of how to be the best class and the best person on the battlefield, oh, shower me, is with your next spell, Dispel Magic. Now, Dispel Magic is amazing. You, my friend, have the best Dispel Magic in the game if you don't include enchantments like Naturalized Magic, but yours is sustainable. And if the game actually goes as long as it should be and you, they don't get refreshed at 15 minutes or it goes past 30 minutes and then a refresh happens past 30 minutes, your Dispel Magic is the best in the game. Now, why do I say this? Well, all of the classes, when they get Dispel Magic, yeah, they usually get it at uh, once per refresh, whatever. Some can experience it and make it chargeable. Yours is innate. Charge times three, which makes it so that you, you don't counter some people like you should. For example, others would say that, oh, well, wizards counter necromancers with dispel magic. Check out our six level healer video to get that debate out of the way because you don't. Uh, <laughs> dispel magic is able to still work on many different things. It's not just an anti druid or anti persistent healer spell. Dispel magic is an anti anyone spell. Did you know? that a warrior's ancestral armor and um, harden our enchantments. Yeah, yeah, it would really suck to lose that enchantment that you took that entire class for to make sure your shield can't be destroyed. It would suck, wouldn't it? Well, guess what? I can do that all the time. Also, you have three per refresh of this amazing ability, which lasts way too long. So wouldn't it suck if a wizard just came and took that away from you? Or what about an assassin who has poison? I mean, poison's chargeable, so maybe not poison, but you could use it on just about anyone. What if anyone has any enchantment? What if a healer decides, oh, I want to go warder and I want to persist people? <laughs> oh, you are the counter to that, my friend. Dispel magic is extremely good. It can change the pace of the game. It can make it so your team has a chance. And I have personally been on the receiving end as a spellcaster who did not have dispel, a bard, when I had a bunch of wizards who did not have dispel magic and the enemy team had a healer who had persistent enlightened soul. That won them the game, because those wizards didn't have Dispel Magic. If you take Dispel Magic, my friend, you will make it so that you are able to dictate how things go. Golems? No. Oh, oh you have Pro Magic? No. You, you have that? No. Uh, you you want to actually do enchants? No. Dispel Magic is extremely powerful, and for one point, getting it one per refresh, charge times three? You, you should get it. Every wizard should get it. The only time you shouldn't have Dispel Magic is when you talk to your team, see that another wizard, at least one, if there are like 30 people or so, has Dispel Magic. Then you can take an archetype at level 6 that doesn't have Dispel Magic, but you need Dispel Magic on your team. I cannot emphasize this enough. Dispel Magic can change games. And if you have two or three wizards who have Dispel Magic and actually use it, remember that it's in their toolkit and they use it, oh my goodness, it, it completely destroys a major event battle game because they are able to do so much. And that's why you need to take Dispel Magic and actually use it. I cannot emphasize this enough. It's a useful tool in your kit. You will have a billion different spells rattling around in your head and this one isn't strictly control or kill like we typically think, so it's easy to forget. I've even forgotten it at times, and I've pelted warriors with force bolts when I should have just, you know, <laughs> dispelled their ancestral armor. But it's, it's an amazing spell. You should take Dispel Magic. You really should take Dispel Magic, and you should use it on everyone. Because it's charge times three, and taking away their pretty little enchantment candies makes their life terrible. And isn't that what we're here for? Now, your next option is Drag Below. Drag below is, it's, very, it's, it's a very simple concept. A person stopped, oh, I'm stopped by Entangle or whatever else. We'll get into two other ways this level. They're stopped, oh, I'm stopped. You die. You kill them when they're stopped. I always envision this as a bunch of undead things coming up and clawing from the ground, dragging them down, and they go down screaming, yeah! That's my personal vision of drag below. Now, drag below is, it, it's, it, it's part of a kill combo, obviously. You need someone to be stopped in order to use it. And this is the appropriate time to talk about kill combos. Kill combos are when you have two spells that work together, synergize, to kill someone. And Wizard is all about synergy when it comes to killing people. The most efficient way to do so is not by getting a once per refresh to kill them, which takes a charge times 10 or charge times 20 to get back, or is a once per refresh and then use. That's not the most efficient way to keep killing people. The most efficient way with verbals to keep killing people, usually, 
is by using a spell and comboing it with another one. Now this can be a verbal and a verbal or a spell ball and a verbal like we just discussed here with Entangle and Drag Below. There are also a certain kill combo spells that are able to be applied to many different other spells. For example, Drag Below can be applied to Entangle, two other spells that we'll talk about this level, and it's very versatile. Kill combos are not what your entire list should ever evolve around though because you should have a bunch of tools to make it work. For example, I have Entangle, I'm probably gonna take those two other spells this level to make it work, and that's nice. And we'll get into a way at level five how it's sustainable, which is really when kill combos come into play. But until then, your kill combo is not the sole reason you're playing a wizard. If you, that is the sole reason why you're playing a wizard, you are very narrow-minded and you won't get the usefulness that you could otherwise. For example, if I focus solely on, all right, I want to get entangled drag below to make happen. Okay, how do I make drag below the best I can? And you go over these other spells that, I've, that I'll show you this level, and you make it work. You decide that I'm going to get this spell, and this spell, and this spell, and I'm going to take innate in order to make my kill combo work forever. It, you're missing out on a bunch of other areas. You will be able to continue this kill combo for a limited amount of time. It's not like spell balls where you can pick things up or pearl eyes which you can get back whenever and chargeables charge times 10 become ridiculous which is what you need to do to make this kill combo work or just about any kill combo work. So charge times 10, charge times 20 is not very viable. Even charge times 15 is not viable and you, you can't focus everything on a kill combo. It is a tool, an asset to your kit. And this is when experience really comes into play is to make you have a kill combo. But it's not what you are. It's not what defines you. It is a part of your build and your spell list. It is not you. You are more than just a kill combo. And if you have more tools to work with, you can deal with more situations. You can kill more, you can control more. And I hope I'm getting this point across that you are not your kill combo. That is, that is like going out on the battlefield with a flail. If anyone knows about my opinion on flails, I'll link to a video where we talk about melee weapons and kind of what flails are. Just focusing on a kill combo, no matter how powerful it is, is basically the flail usage of a wizard. Extension is wonderful. Extension makes it so that that Dispo Magic, oh, I'm gonna run away. No, you don't. That guy's running away from Dispo Magic. And you know what? He's really fast and I've been talking a lot and I have a dry throat and I'm really getting tired. Well, Extension is a spell for you. Well, Meta Magic for you, my friend. Extension is where you are able to extend a 20 foot verbal to 50 feet, which is so useful for you. Oh my God, as a wizard, you are all about affecting the enemy team, making them suffer, making their life terrible, making their depression levels go up. And extension helps you accomplish that. Extension can extend, shove that healer who's just trying to do their job, who's trying to charge up that resurrect. Who's that? Who's that? The fourth charge. Okay, I'm almost there. And you say, hey, healer, walk back. Oh, by the way, you're going to have to restart that charge again. <laughs> and you just make it so that their life's terrible. Or you can get that dispel magic off. You can get that spell off that you want. Extension is something you should definitely take as a wizard. At least one. At least one. Now, a spell that you should take none of is Greater Men. Why? Well, think about it this way. Greater Men can do what Men does. Okay, I can mend my dagger already. Who cares? And it also restores all points to a location. I don't, I don't see any viable armor on me. I mean, I guess I could get an enchant. And if it can't help me, then who's it gonna help? My teammate? <laughs> a warrior? My, uh, sorry, sorry, I can't refer to them as that. My meat shield? No, they should be able to repair themselves or get a druid to repair them. I mean, I have better things to spend my points on. Why would I help a meat shield to repair their armor? Come on. Come on, seriously? And it's per refresh? Get out of here. There is no reason why you should ever take Greater Men. If there is a reason, send it to a druid because they, they're probably more interested in it than you are. And they can synergize better with it anyway. You are meant to affect the enemy team and make them sad. Not, not help repair your team. What is this? Okay, back on track. We're gonna get to a spell that actually does make the other team sad. And this is Hold Person. Now. Whole person, while being part of a kill combo, is a little bit better than Astral Intervention. Why I state this is because hold person makes it so that you can affect the other person while they're stuck. Now, Entangle already does that. We talk about how Entangle is nice, and we'll get to Frozen versus Stopped in a little bit with Ice Wall. But when they're stopped, 
you can affect them. You can do this to warriors, you can do this to assassins, whatever else. You can do whatever you want. You can stop them. You can then do it, your planar grounding on the assassin. You can stop them. You can, you can just do whatever you want. Hold person allows you to uh, do what astral intervention does and kind of more, which is why it's a little bit better. And in addition to this, while you ask per life like astral intervention, it synergizes with dragged below a little bit better than astral intervention does with its kill combo. Now it's debatable dependent upon your field, but with you and how you can make your spell list, and we'll talk to this uh, like kind of level six too, why it's so good is that whole person is about synergy. And as a wizard, you want to have a lot of tools to your kit but you also want to be synergistic. You want to make it so that they work well together. We've talked about kill combos, but you also want to make it so that you can keep spell, 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 spell after spell, and make it so you can do whatever you want to a person. Hold person really accomplishes that with most classes. So hold person is a pretty good option to take. Now, ice ball. If you noticed, I kept my force bolts here. I just took off the thing because I don't need it right now. And my uh, control balls are here. Now, ice ball is extremely good. We talked about why it's way better than Suppression Bolt in level two. Don't ever take that crap purple spell ball. But Ice Ball, well, we've talked about it a lot. It freezes people. It's a great spell ball. And Frozen, it can be better than Stopped and it can be worse. Why do I say that? Frozen does the exact same job that Suppression Bolt does, but better. It sets you up for a kill combo. Talked about that kill combo at level four. Ice Ball also makes it so that, as we talked about in level 2, the enemy has to come up to try to release them, and Ice Ball, it, it completely takes a person out of play. That's a really good control. If for 60 seconds you make it so that they can't play, I, I don't know what's much better than that. So Ice Ball is a very good spell. It's good to stop healers who are trying to charge or whatever else. And then you can make this conga line of people trying to release other people as they're frozen. And slowly you guys can go about killing them. I mean, Ice Ball is, it's a good spell. I would definitely take it. It's one point per two balls. It's good. Definitely take Ice Ball. Now the other spell ball you get at this level, only one point per one ball I know is Lightning Bolt. Now, Lightning Bolt is amazing. It is one for one, but oh my god, think of what it does. You know what a Force Bolt does? Level one Force Bolt, pretty nice little blue ball, weapon destroying armor, but you, you get the idea. Lightning Bolt does all that, plus Entangle, and it is Flame. You're literally combining your level one and two spell balls into one, and it's Flame. So who does it affect? Yes. Yes, it affects everyone unless a monk blocks it or someone's immune to flame through enchantments by a druid. Lightning Bolt's really good. And even then, if a druid gives someone iron skin, you hit them on their hand, they're like, huh, immune to flame. You say, take your point, because that immunity does not extend to equipment, which is technically the magical armor. So Lightning Bolt is really good. You throw it at a barbarian, the person you've had problems with. You hit their shield. They are now stopped. Barbarians like the only class that have no way to get out of your spells. So you have fun just messing with them. You have fun going, hey, barbarian, guess what? How does it feel to be stopped? Not too good? Well, how does it feel to be wounded? Oh, not too good? How does it feel to have your weapon heated? Oh, that's not great, is it? Oh, I'm gonna destroy your weapon that's heated. Oh, oh, wow. It sucks, doesn't it? Life's terrible. Crawl for me, that's right, shove. No, don't get up and walk. That's, that's against what the spell does. Crawl. That is why Lightning Bolt is amazing. Now that we have the spell balls out of the way, let's go into the start of another kill combo. Ravage. It's two per life, part of a kill combo, and that seems pretty good. The problem is this. Listen to the incant. Death shall ravage thy flesh and make thee fragile. Say that fast three times. Death shall ravage thy flesh and make thee fragile. Death shall ravage thy flesh and make thee fragile. Death shall ravage thy flesh and make thee fragile. I'm out of practice. That was not good. That was not audible. That was not able to count. And uh, this is the point I'm making to you, is that it takes a lot of practice, I'm out of it, in order to say Ravage properly, quickly. And even then, it's hard for people to understand, because there are so many syllables and enunciations that are similar, that it's hard for your target to even know what that spell is. So Ravage has problems. Good news is that once they know that you're casting this spell, they will know to back away because it makes them fragile and ready for a kill combo. 
This means that your ravage is a mini shove for one and a half lines. Just for that flash to make the, they start backing away five feet from the line. Okay, that's a mini shove. You have an infinite mini shove. You don't even need to charge it. It's two per life. It's not bad. You get it at six, well, at six level, you can make it extremely viable to make another kill combo happen. And Ravage is, it's a pretty good option for you to take. It's hard to master. It's hard to make worth it. But because of its usefulness, it kind of offsets its difficulty, which is why it's just, it's just in the middle. It's green. Now, a very situational spell, not dependent upon your skill, but a situational based on the game is Shatter Weapon. Heat Weapon is great. Heat Weapon makes a person unable to use their weapon for 30 seconds. It's an ongoing effect on the weapon. The person needs release. Well, yeah, 5 out of 10 classes have release. They need release and to know that it actually works on Heat Weapon in order for Heat Weapon to not be an issue. And Heat Weapon is per life. It is also a first level spell. The Shatter Weapon destroys a weapon and it is per refresh. It is also a third level spell. Now, Shatter Weapon is good when a monster is immune to flame, because heat weapon won't work. If a person is not immune to flame, heat weapon is generally better, because mend counters shatter weapon, and many classes have mend, so, eh? I, I mean, <laughs> shatter weapon has its situational place, and it's really good against monsters who are immune to flame, like let's say a, f a fire giant who goes at that with one sword, you shatter the weapon, oh, I'm sad, and then you kill that fire giant. So shatter weapon does have a place. It is useful. It's not just useful in theory craft, and you can apply it because enchantments that give immunity to flame happen all the time. Anti paladins exist. It it does have a place. It's just it's just not universally good. Because it's per refresh. It, uh, it, it's a hard spell to really uh, advocate for because the, the, the situations have to be there in order for it to be really better than Heat Weapon. Otherwise, Heat Weapon is just better. So you have to have prepared your spell list based on what's coming up or what you think will be in the battlefield. And if you think that Immunity to Flame will become a very prevalent issue, and you can destroy a person's weapon, then take Shatter Weapon. Ah, the fun one, the trolly one, throw. Throw it on an optimized spell list, it has no place. It's not that great of a spell. Throw doesn't give you a massive control advantage. It doesn't give you a consistent control advantage like a spell ball or a per life does. It's a per refresh and shove kind of does what throw does anyway and does everything you need to. But throw is so fun to use. For throw, you, you th instead of making someone go back 20 feet like you do in shove, which is charge time three and per life, kind of negates the need for throw, you, you throw someone back 50 feet. Let's just make it ridiculous. And throw is... It's a fun spell. It's a very fun spell. But it's not... It's not a spell that's consistently useful. It's not a spell that'll change the game. It could get someone out of a line, but so could shove, and so could you killing people, and so could you freezing people. And there are a bunch of different tools that can do what throw wants to do but more frequently and a little bit better and throw it's not the most powerful spell in the game but it is so fun and it can be useful which is why it is orange it's just not that useful or that good so that is our level three spells with wizard i would love to hear what you think in the comment section below is throw better than you actually than, than i give it credit for are do you take <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't keep a straight face. I was going to say Greater Men, but we all know that that's a chump spell, or at least that's a druid spell. That's not a spell that you should ever take. <laughs> greater Men, what, what is this? But if you want to advocate for why Greater Men's good in the comments below, I would love to prove you wrong. Until next time, this has been Wizzo, and keep LARPing. And don't forget to make people's lives terrible.